Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about enhanced for loops in Java. So we covered about the for loops and the structure of it and the control flow of it in the previous session and today we are just going to talk about another way of writing for loops which is a bit even more smarter than the traditional for loops which we call as enhanced for loops. We generally use the enhanced for loops for scenarios whenever we have to iterate over a collection of items or an array of items. Those are the most popular and common use cases of using enhanced for loop. And this for loop is even simpler, like I said, it's even simpler than uh, writing a classic for loop. And the syntax is simply like this. You again start with for, put the standard brackets, and then let's start from the rightmost because then at I will be able to explain it better. You specify the collection in the rightmost side of the bracket. The collection can be an array, it can be a list, it can be a map. So whatever different kind of collections which are available in Java and we are going to cover collections in detail. So don't worry if you don't understand what are lists and what are maps and what are sets. We will go into detail of each of these one by one in the upcoming sessions. But the idea is that you put the collection to the rightmost, then you put a colon, and then you put a representation of the member of this collection. So for example, here this numbers is basically an int array. So this int array means that this array can only hold integer numbers, and that's why we write int here, because this array is only having integers. Then we put any placeholder variable name. This can be anything. You can even write it as i if you want to. You can write it as anything, any variable name which you want to write. This is a temporary variable. So now this code is going to execute in a manner that it is going to iterate over this array one by one, starting from the first element, going till the last element. You don't need to write any initialization code. You don't need to write any termination condition code and you don't need to write any increment or decrement code also. And how these, threes, uh, how these three values are actually taken care of, let's understand that as well. So when we talk about the initialization, as I have put an array here, a data structure here, the automatic initialization index is going to be the first index. So when we do the iteration, when this for loop is going to execute, it is automatically going to initialize a temporary variable with the value at the first index, which is the index zero. As you know, that array is a zero index based structure. Then comes the condition part. So the condition evaluation is going to be again based on the size of the array or the size of the data structure which you are using. It is going to start from the first index, which is the index zero, and it is going to iterate till the array's last element is reached. So technically start from the index zero and go till the last element. That's your evaluation condition. And then comes the increment part. So at each step after it has successfully accessed the first element, automatically the index is going to be updated to pointing to the next element. So if it starts from here, once the first step iteration is complete, I is automatically going to be incremented to index one and then it will basically this i will be holding two then in the next iteration the same i is going to be holding three similarly i will keep holding the new value of the collection item one by one till the collection items last element is reached so this is the basic premise that you can write a collection variable here and keep iterating over it and this whatever variable you write here will hold the current items value one by one. So in the first step, this i is going to hold one. In the second step, this i is going to hold two. In the third step, this i is going to hold three and so on and so forth. That's the basic idea. So now let's run this program to see what kind of output do we get. So you can see we basically are able to print all the elements of the array. And that's probably one of the most popular usage as well, that if you want to just print all the elements or access all the elements of a array or a collection one by one, then just use enhanced for loop. So you can see at each step, 
it is printing the value of i and the value of i is basically the subsequent elements of the array that's the whole idea with enhanced for loop under the hoods if you talk about how does it work under the hood it is actually using the classic for loop construct itself but for developers it is making it easier because it knows that if you are iterating over a collection you will start with the first element and you will go till the last element so it knows the initialization value the termination condition and it also knows the increment condition and that's the reason you will use enhanced for loops in java for iterating over collections now there is another advanced concept in the for loops which is around nested loops but i think it will it will be too much complicated if i talk about this in this particular session itself so we are going to restrict this session to only discuss about enhanced for loops and in the next session we will be talking about the nested for loops concept and we will be looking at an example of how to implement nested for loops and when do we use nested for loops if you like this video a thumbs up will be massively appreciated and do not forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session